Okay, so we're here with our for our Golden Eagle Insider, doing it a little bit different uh, on, over Zoom this time, uh, joined by Hunter Plant, and our guest for today is Minnesota Crookston softball coach Travis Owen. How are you doing today, Travis? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? Doing well, real well. Good to see you, okay. Trav. Yeah, yep. great yeah, wish, to see you. Wish I could be running into you guys, you know, in the sports center and in the offices and stuff, but Zoom will do at least, right? We've been getting yeah, it'll do Zoom do for now. It's kind of what we yeah. we've got to do right now. It's been it's been weird not seeing many people for really since what March sixteenth, I think was the last time we were all together. So I'll right. say this: I won't uh, I won't take uh, running into you for granted anymore in the sports center. That's for that's for <laughs> dang sure, you know? right? Yeah. Hey, man. If there if there's been any good things from the pandemic, you know, it, it makes you realize you can't take anything for granted. Exactly. You know? Even like exactly. our season, you know, every day is important. Yeah, exactly. you can't take anything for granted at all. And you've just got to be appreciative of all your friendships, relationships, just sports you play, your job. You know, I think it's, yep. it definitely has brought on a new appreciation for just little things and just things that sometimes you, you do take for granted. Yep, no doubt. So the first question we got for you today, Travis, is just what are some activities that you've been doing uh, just to keep keep yourself active kind of away from softball? Obviously, you've been doing a lot with softball to keep the team active, but just what have you been doing to keep yourself, your, your mind, your, you know, physic physically healthy, just different things that you've been able to do? Yeah, yeah. I mean, normally at this time of the year, you know, we'd be traveling a lot, recruiting, watching games. We're still doing a, a little bit of recruiting, um, you know, the, the best way we can, talking with, with travel coaches and looking at a lot of video and, um, you know, doing Zoom meetings and stuff with recruits. We're still maybe going to add uh, – we're looking at a few for this year still if, if it works out. Um, and then looking ahead in the future, I mean, not, not too far from now, we'll be able to contact uh, 2022s, which are current – you know, going to be juniors. Um, but outside of the softball stuff, um, hanging out a lot with Cash. He's, I don't know if you could hear him. He's whining a little bit, but <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to move the computer, but my big German shepherd, <laughs> but he's real vocal. So he, he whines a lot when he hears voices. So he hears you guys <laughs> like, who is that? You know, should I, should I go talk to him? But he's been getting uh, spoiled cause we get outside, you know, uh, several times more than, than usual. Uh, when I'm gone in the office and stuff. So, yeah, we get out a lot. We go for runs a little bit. Sometimes I don't take him for the runs because uh, he's getting up there a little older. Um, <laughs> but he still loves to get outside. So we get out a lot. Um, I've been disc golfing, golfing. You guys have ever ever done that? Uh, Hunter knows yep. that. I've yep. uh, gone out with him once. So It we, did we not go well for here. me. Yeah, it, it yeah, didn't go hard. very well for me. Yeah, it's, yeah, disc yeah, it's not is easy, but it's, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little harder than you expect. I've I used to disc golf a little bit in college, and I have I've disc golfed at least once up here in Grand Forks as well. Uh huh. Yeah, they ha they actually have a really nice course up in Grand Forks. So yep. um, I went there the other day and looking to get up there a little bit more. You know, just some some hobbies outside of uh, softball stuff, especially since we can't be doing a whole lot with that. But um, yep. otherwise, you know, there there's always stuff to do. I mean, coming up with ideas for next year on just developing the players and, and workout programs. And, um, you know, it's, it's kind of endless, you know, so I, I definitely, even though it's a hard time, you know, I definitely don't believe in just, you know, sitting around or, or not doing anything or, or pouting about it. You know, I mean, obviously we're all in it together and it's a tough, you know, tough time of year, but uh, the future is still going to happen, you know, and we still want our program to be, to be the best it can be. So. Absolutely. So Trav, obviously kind of this COVID-19 kind of came out of nowhere, right? It kind of happened where we were two days away from getting ready to go to Florida to hopefully win some games down there and then bang, our season's done. So what was that kind of like, like for our student athletes? How have you been staying in touch with them and what has that changed? Like it's obviously changed the recruiting part of it because, you know, you're not getting able to see these girls in the summer or in the spring. So A, what has it been like to communicate with your student athletes and B, what has the recruiting part kind of changed for you and Megan and Justin as a coaching staff? Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've been uh, doing the best we can to stay in touch with the team. Obviously it's different not being with them in person. 
But uh, just the other day, I zoomed zoomed with each of them and and called some of them too, just checking in. You know, we we don't want to be uh, over overdoing it, but right. just want to make sure they're doing fine. And they are. You know, um, a lot of them are are working. Even they just finished up school, um, so you know, obviously uh, graduation happened the the other week. So. Uh, they're finished up with classes and stuff now. We had a great GPA, so you know that's something that the team is really proud of, and yeah, that was great. a big goal of our team to to get a good GPA. So we had a three seven six, I believe it was. I don't have it right in front of me. It was right around that three seven six. So that was that was a great GPA, and um, you know we've been staying in touch with them about class, and you know giving them just giving them a, a listening ear or giving them advice if they needed on uh, you know the success center and different um, resources that they can take advantage of if they were like struggling in a class. Um, but anyway, that, that ended up wrapping up really well. And um, now just checking in once in a while and, you know, they're, they're hanging in there. They're doing fine. I mean, it sounds like a lot of them are staying busy. Um, a lot of them have had questions about workout stuff. So that's good to see, you know, they're, they're doing some things, running, doing body weight stuff. Um, whatever we can do, right? Like it's, uh, it's a, like you said, Hunter, it's a weird time and the season came to an abrupt end. So I've always believed in, in NBA, you know, next best action. What's mm -hmm. the next best thing we can do from here? And Trav, so, you've kind of always been one of those coaches, you know, me and you are really good friends and you've kind of been all the, those coaches that another obstacle in the way, right? Like you've always been one to kick down the door and this is just another obstacle, right? I mean, it's just one of those things where hopefully the girls come back mentally and physically stronger next year, right? Yeah, that's all it is. I, I mean, not certainly not downplaying it. You know, it's it's a bad situation. Right. Yep. Um, but, you know, as far as what's under our control, that's what we talk a lot about as a team. You know, the, yeah, it's just kind of an obstacle. And those things are going to happen in life, right? There's going to be obstacles all the time. And, and it's really about how you how you handle it and how you deal with it. And, you know, that's that's not to, to say you're weak if, if you're having trouble with it, you know, cause right. that's what we're here for is, as coaches and as a team to be a support staff and hopefully give you good, you know, good words of motivation and help you get through it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of how the team is handling it. Um, just from talking to them and, um, yeah, the fun thing I guess about next year is we'll be able to come back and start playing again and appreciate it more and, mm -hmm. you know, battle it out and, and see who uh, can, can uh, earn spots and stuff. So we're still looking forward to all that. You know, we've got some more depth coming in. We're, we're still looking to add a couple of players. And, you know, my hope, and, and I'm sure the team's hope too, is just that we can be as normal as possible, you know, next fall. I mean, I don't know what practices and stuff will look like, but uh, we're definitely planning on doing it. And, and I'm, you know, planning, uh, planning for those to happen. So awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's all you can do is just plan for, at least somewhat normalcy it you know none of us know exactly what everything's going to look like yet but right. uh, i think we're all excited to get back to to some kind of normalcy so right yeah, that'll be that'll be great but also travis we just want to get to know a little bit more about you just before before you became head coach at minnesota crookston just how was it that you first got interested in the sport of you know both baseball and softball I know you played a little bit of baseball and then softball as well, but uh, just just talk about uh, how you first got involved in the game. Uh huh. Well, um, bottom line, I just I love coaching. You know, I love being around teams and I love being able to help where I can. And um, to be a head coach is something I've always wanted to do. And um, you know, just to be able to build a program and and uh, you know direct things in in a positive direction and the way that you want them to turn out and help the players. So. Um, I was a head coach for one year at an NAI as a softball coach and then went to New Zealand to learn more and play more. Um, and I knew that it was hard giving up a head coaching spot, right? So I was um, in the back of my head, I, I wanted to be a head coach again at, at the collegiate level. So before here, I was at University of Northern Colorado uh, as an assistant and really given a lot of responsibility. That was great. I'm real appreciative of Shana easily. She was the head coach there. And um, let me dive into being the lead hitting, lead pitching, and the recruiting coordinator. So all the things I love and really set me up, you know, to, to get that next head coaching position. But before all that happened, I, I mean, I never, before I even got into softball, I never would have guessed I would have been into softball. You know, again, I just, I love coaching. Really, it was like whatever route that, that was where I was going to go. You know, I was open to baseball, softball, I mean, shoot, even basketball or something. You know, I love playing basketball, but I didn't play basketball in uh, college. 
played college baseball. Um, and one thing kind of led to another. I was, I was a GA, a grad assistant at Northern State University. Um, after having played baseball, uh, I was the uh, strength and conditioning grad assistant. So I thought maybe that was the route I was going to go. You know, I love that stuff. I love how the body moves and athletic development. And um, I, I was really enjoying that. But uh, then I really missed being around like one team. You know, strength and conditioning is more, you work with a lot of different teams. And as a GA, I, I had baseball, softball, and swimming. Um, and, you know, I, I missed kind of like, I want to be with one team. So uh, after that finished up, I had the opportunity to stay on at Northern State. Um, train the softball team and be a softball assistant. They didn't really have uh, much of a, a softball assistant there. Um, we had a GA, and then that was it, um, And besides our head coach. So um, she, she kept me on, which I'm appreciative of that. That got me started in my softball coaching career. Um, and then from there, I, I wanted to get more into playing, you know, so I played some men's fast pitch. There was a league there at Sioux Falls. Um, and then, again, that ended up going to New Zealand even um, after – after getting into softball coaching. So yeah, I love, I just love sports. I love being around teams and, and especially to be a head coach now is awesome. Um, and softball obviously, you know, has grown on me and become the route that, that I'm going to go here for my career. Drive, you kind of touched on it a little bit in the last answer, but you know, you were at some successful programs. I know Northern, Northern Colorado, always a really good softball program. Radford University, who are you at, where you were at for a while, a really good softball program. So did you always want to be a softball coach? And who are some of the people or programs um, that kind of lay, helped laid the groundwork for you to be now the head uh, softball coach at Minnesota? Uh -huh. Yeah, definitely good. I've had good impacts uh, or, or I've gotten impacted well by uh, coaches that I've been around. Um, Radford was Eileen Morales. She's now at Georgia Tech, um, but she gave me the opportunity to be a pitching coach there. That was before going to UNC, and I mentioned Shana there. Um, but going back even further, I'd say Tina Murray, she had a great impact on me, and she wasn't even a softball coach. She was the University of Louisville um, sport performance, huh. uh, uh, head of sport performance development. So the cool thing about that is they didn't call it strength and conditioning. They're like, it's way more than that, right? It's oh, yeah. nutrition, it's moving well, it's speed, it's mobility. And I, I, again, I love that stuff. And that's how I got into coaching, really. So she had a great impact on me. She ran a, a great program, um, just tireless worker and, you know, did it for the players to get better and, and pushed them, you know, in a good way. I mean, uh, motivated them and uh, put in a lot of time. So that was really, that really sparked my my interest into coaching. Uh, so when you say, did I always want to be a softball coach? No, not necessarily. You know, um, she, she sparked that for me. Uh, and then from there, one thing kind of just led to another and Northern state had that opening and um, our softball team did well that year. We made the conference tournament that year when I was helping train them. So I got to be around that and see that. And um, you know, it really grew on me. And, and again, I love just being around one team rather than, your strength and conditioning, you're, you're training a bunch of them, and you don't see them as much on the field, and you're not working with them all the time. Um, so that was a cool year at Northern State, and that, that kept that fire going and with softball. Um, and that's a big reason that I'm here. You know, I knew of Minnesota Crookston because they're in the same conference as Northern State, and we made the conference tournament at Northern State at the time with less uh, resources and stuff than what we have here. You know, we've got our turf room here. We've got the off-campus sports center when I interviewed here, I was really impressed with, with what we had, you know, mm -hmm. um, maybe the perception was of Crookston, well, they don't have a lot or it's a really small city and it's hard to get enough resources. But when I got here, I was like, Hey, we can, we can do it. You know, at Northern state, we made the conference tournament and I love that underdog mentality. You know, that's uh, that's just, that's what sports are about. You know, can we make the most yes, of what we have and go beat those teams that are bigger and supposed to be better than us. And, you know, that's a huge reason that I wanted to come here. And, Trav, that's – for people who don't know, making the conference tournament of softball is really, really, really hard, right? Sure, because yeah, like, a lot of good teams. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've, we've got the D2 national champs in our conference. Right. And the Augustana, they didn't even win the, the conference uh, the year they won the national championship. A different team did, Winona, right. went undefeated yep. in conference. And then there's a lot of other teams that have beat those teams throughout conference play. Yep. So, you know, that's what's fun about it. It's uh, it's tough to do. And uh, when you do make it, you know, it's a really cool accomplishment. 
Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's some phenomenal programs in this conference. You mentioned Bogostana, <laughs> Winona State, Minnesota State, Mankato has uh -huh. been there. Yeah, they've won a couple as championships. Well. Yeah. Well, so it's, like you guys said, really tough conference to get to that top eight in, and hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get there soon. Yeah, ha having been at a couple D1s, you know, I mean, Radford, the Big South, that's pretty good ball. I mean, um, you know, it's not top, top Division One Tennessee and SEC and all that, but it's it's a little bit below that. And we played a lot of those teams and we were able to hang, but um, being around that level and then seeing some of our teams, you know, at the top of the conference, if I were back at a D1 or something, you know, if I were at UNC still, I wouldn't want to play the teams in our conference because, uh, you know, they can beat them for sure. You know, but that's, that's again, what's cool about being here. It's a high level of ball. And, um, you know, it, it definitely, uh, even though it's D2, we're in one of the best conferences in the nation. So that's pretty cool to be around. Absolutely. Talk a little bit about your experience in New Zealand. It's uh, pretty cool that you went over there and, and got the chance to play some ball. And uh, just what was, what was it like down there in terms of the competitiveness of softball? And just talk a little bit about uh, just your experience and some of your best memories that you had uh, during your time in New Zealand. Yeah, I was there for about a year. Um, yeah, a lot, a lot of memories. I, I, w I wanted to go there to learn more, yeah. uh, especially pitch. Um, before that I hadn't gotten that much into pitching. I had practiced a little on my own. I knew how important it was. And, and that brings up another good mentor that has helped me along the way and still does. That's Doug Gillis. He was a great men's U S national team pitcher. And he's currently the Virginia tech uh, pitching coach. And he was at Mizzou before that. So when I was at the NAI as a head coach, he would, he would come down and, you know, I got to know him and he would come do camps for us at, awesome. at Lyon college where I was the head coach. And then we'd pay him for the camp, but then he would stick around and work with our pitchers. And then I was always picking his brain, like, hey, how do you move the ball like that? Or, you know, just it was great, the things that he was teaching and um, soaked it up a lot. Loved, I mean, that's what I love about coaching, too, is you're constantly learning. And so I knew how important pitching was. I was, I was trying it myself. I wanted to get better at it. And that was a big reason to go out to New Zealand. Um, yeah. You know, they've got different levels all over. So they've got, like, top – top level, you know, Black Sox type players. That's the New Zealand national team. Yep. Uh, and then they kind of just like we have basketball leagues here or whatever, like for, for playing for fun. They have softball, you know, men's fast pitch leagues there too. So I was able to get in and pitch in some games, you know, and that was, that was humbling right away. But then, you know, I learned and, and you get challenged and you figure it out and you practice more. I mean, that's a lot of my memories was just like throwing balls in a net, you know, and trying to spin it different and get better. and then okay, cool, I get my chance now to go pitch against some of these guys that can hit. Um, and then just being around the game, seeing it at a high level, you know, being a part of some games that I recognize some of those Black Sox guys that we played against, you know, when I was on, um, you know, sitting uh, with the premier guys, like, wow, that's Brad Rona, you know, he, I saw him, uh, since I've been getting into fast pitch at the time, I saw him hit a home run, you know, yep. in the Worlds and stuff. So th those memories are, are going to be, you know, I'm never going to forget those. And um, just a lot of a lot of learning out there, you know, being around softball, and then it's beautiful too. You know, that's yeah. the first. I mean, I would have done it regardless, but it's a beautiful country. Um, ocean is right there, you know. So I did a lot of swimming in the ocean until I started seeing videos of all these great white sharks around there. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> your chances are you're not going to get eaten by a shark, but still, no. I was, you know, worries. It makes you in the back of your head when you're swimming around. You you know, you think about sharks. But anyway, it was, it was cool <laughs> being around. You know, getting in the ocean a lot and a lot of surfers and stuff out there and just being around ball all the time. Yeah, that's great. Hard to make a living, you know, and, and I wanted to, I mean, I was kind of just getting by out there. You know, they were paying right. me to, to coach a little bit, but it's not like it is here. Um, so I was coaching the, one of the premier women's teams with our club and then uh, helping out as a development officer, uh, like trying to get, get players into our club and, and develop them. And it, it was fun and it was awesome. But, yeah, I was ready to get back to the U.S. where the women's game is way more competitive and you yeah. can coach for a living. And, um, you know, it's more integrated into schools and, and you can be a college head coach rather than kind of a club team head, co head coach out there. Yeah, it sounds like a great experience that you had out there, though. And once in a lifetime that, like you said, you'll never forget. Yeah, Next. I, I knew if I was going to do it, that was the time, you know, when I was kind of yeah. younger. Um, not that I'm old now, but, um, get, you know, getting older. So and make sure hard. our viewers know that you're not old, Travis. <laughs> you know, it's, 
yeah, hope, tell the slow team, slow pitch team that that I played with last year when I pulled my hamstring running around third that I'm not <laughs> getting that old yet. But uh, yeah, I mean, it it was an opportunity to learn and grow as a coach. And you know, once you're many years into your career, it's harder to just like leave the country and go do yeah. something like that. Yeah. And, and I've gotten that fill now, you know, so I'm ready to continue continue my career. Obviously, here with Crookson. Absolutely. Um, another question too is just what is your hidden talent or a hobby that not everyone might know that you're good at or just something, something like that. Well, I shot even yesterday on the Crookston disc golf course, Frolfen. That's so, good. But we already brought that up. So maybe that's not fair, but, um, maybe, you know, something that not a lot of people know our players, some of our players might, cause I have them do it. We play handball up there uh, against the one wall. I got into handball quite a bit back when I was in grad school at Northern state, you know, when I, was helping out with the softball team and stuff and um, actually started a club handball program there and we went to oh, nationals awesome. and uh, I would say that was my best sport you know at the time and even to this day I'm kind of you know I got long arms and um, I don't you know I dive and I don't really care about I shouldn't say I don't care about my body you know but I'm competitive and I love playing <laughs> and there's guys that that are that have been playing since they were kids and uh, it was fun to be able to compete against those guys and hang I mean, I didn't, you know, I didn't win like national tournaments or anything, but yeah. I, I made some of them and got to play against some really good uh, competitive handballers that, you know, I'd been growing up playing. And then again, it's kind of that underdog mentality, right? Like I um, hadn't been doing it and I still wanted to compete against those guys. So I'd say that's a little bit of a hidden talent. I don't go diving and stuff against our girls when, when we play, you know, so I'm not <laughs> But they, awesome. some of them do. It's awesome to see. I, I put it on Twitter now and then, like, they're competing. And, mm -hmm. you know, you got to – it's it's a real basic game for anyone that hasn't seen handball. It's uh, Now, there's Olympic handball, which is different than the handball we do. Yep. That's the stuff on you see on TV where they, like, run with a ball and they throw it into the goal. Yep. It's different. a lot like soccer and hockey yeah. and bat, kind of bat. It's all a lot of sports combined. Right. The, yep. the handball that I'm talking about is um, you have a wall yep. – Yep. And, and I got more into four wall, which is indoor, you know, it's a racquetball court, but uh, yep. you can play one wall and that's what our team plays now and then up in the turf room. And it's just one wall and they have uh, out of bounds marks. You got to hit the ball within the line yep. and then you got to get it before it bounces twice, you know, and then you hit it and then the person you're playing has to get it before it bounces twice. That's so it's awesome. a pretty simple game and uh, it's fun though. You, you dive around, you know, you hit good shots, you hit kill shots, they're called, which are like, an inch above the front wall, so they just bounce, 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 you know, and mm. it's impossible for your opponent to get it. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you Trav, use both hands too, you know, left hand, right hand. So That's cool. Trav, we knew, uh, you know, we knew how excited you were about the about this past season, 2020, where you had a lot of girls coming back at Paige Pitlick in the circle. Really excited about her. But what do you – we have a strong core returning next year with a lot of really good freshmen coming in. So – what are you most excited about as the season rolls on? Hopefully, knock on wood, next year as we yeah. get uh, back into things. And what are you most excited about the group that's co that comes back next year? Yeah, first of all, I'm pretty optimistic. I mean, the season's going to go. It looks like we're, we're having to cut games out, though, uh, for Division Two, So we're going to have less games, but we'll play. Um, yep. And the mo thing I'm looking forward to the most is just getting the team together, you know, Absolutely. and, being able, again, being able to practice again and um, – Having, having them get to know each other and developing that team culture. You know, uh, like you mentioned, Hunter, we got a lot of freshmen coming in. We got uh, five freshmen now and one transfer coming in. And we're looking to add, you know, maybe another freshman or another transfer as well. Um, and then all the returners, you know, they've got a lot of experience under their belts. Um, they've been uh, all except uh, one JP because she's been around forever. They've, they've all been <laughs> now with me as a coach, you know, for their whole career. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, we've got, you know, they kind of all know what to expect. And, um, yeah, that's just – that's an exciting thing for me because we're really continuing to develop, like, the glue of our program. You know, what are we about? And um, let's make sure our team culture is is at the forefront of all that. And, um, you know, I'm excited to get the girls together and, um, you know, just get to know each other and stuff and, and do some fun team activities and, and get practicing as well. Trav, I know you're really excited about the transfer picture that you got from LAU Post. Obviously, uh -huh. a program that uh, was basically disbanded right after making the College right. World Series um, from LAU Post. So just talk a little bit about her and what and you expect her to probably be our ace next year, right, to go a lot of innings, pitch a lot of games. So just tell our viewers a little, about, a little bit about her who could maybe be a really good pitcher for us next year. 
right? Yeah, well, we don't guarantee, you know, any, like when I'm recruiting, I don't right. say you're going to come be our ace or, or anything right. like that. But obviously she's, she's done a great job where she's been. Um, okay. But, you know, it's, it's a blank slate as far as competition this next year. So uh, we've got some other pitchers that are going to be able to yep. push for time in the circle, which is really important for our conference, you know, playing uh, midweek doubleheaders. And then yep. weekend back to back double headers. There's a lot of games, and it's hard to just ride one pitcher, you know. Yeah, you got to have um, but, a few arms. Yeah, yeah. But but Katie was at LIU Post. They had made the D two College World Series. Um, she has a year left of eligibility because their program um, is disbanding to like taking the year off to then merge with another LIU school yeah, and they go to Division one. Yeah, because they combined into a division one program, Long Island's doing a lot of different things. I saw they just added hockey and uh, okay. they're, they're really changing how they're doing things up there. But yeah, what a couple different campuses molding into one to go division one essentially is what's right, going right. on. Yeah. So that, that led, uh, you know, that um, gave the NCAA exception for any player on that team to transfer and come in right away and play somewhere. So yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, grateful and fortunate we got Katie and uh, she's she's a competitor man she loves to um, play at a high level and she's been uh, pitching for uh, the Czech national team you know so that's uh, that's something that she's pretty big into and um, yeah I mean she definitely is is uh, someone that we're looking to to get a lot of innings out of you know Uh, and we don't have a we don't have a whole ton of pitchers uh, which I like you know I I think I'd like more than like three and that's what we're we're going to have, but I, I'm not one of those pitching coaches that wants, you know, six or seven pitchers. I mean, some yep. uh, teams in our conference and some teams that I've seen at D1 too, I mean, they have a lot of pitchers and it's just tough to get them all innings. It's tough to work closely with all of them, you know, but uh, yeah, we're, we're looking to have around four is, um, is my ideal number and we're still looking to maybe add one. So yeah, I like where we're at in the circle for sure. Good. Yeah, we're really excited to see what this uh, 2021 squad can do. Obviously, 2020, we were excited to see what might happen. Didn't quite go as planned, but still a lot of lessons and different things that you can take away uh, moving in to 2021. Right. Yeah, for sure. We're, we're all excited. And again, the thing I'm looking forward to the most, just getting the team together and you know, be, becoming a team again so that we're not having to just talk on zoom or, you know, I'm sending out some hitting videos now and then like, Hey, you know, watching one thing I've been doing is watching reruns of softball games. And there's some good old MLB baseball games too. So sometimes I'll see a good teaching moment, and, yep. you know, send it out to the team, but yeah, they're, they're all looking forward to playing some ball again. So hopefully that's uh, helping them keep softball in their mind. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be exciting though to get everyone back uh, when they can get back here. I know you probably got the most players still here uh, in town because that's the most okay. I see any student athletes is seeing JP working at Hugo's uh-huh. or Darian uh-huh. working at Walmart. So <laughs> yep. Yeah, JP, Darian. Uh, Cassie was here for a while, but she's Cassie back home was. now. Yep. Uh, and then Malia, who just Malia's graduated, but Malia here. will be around a little bit next year and, yep. and might look teaching. to help out. You know, that'd be awesome yep. to have uh, any players that graduate from our program to – stick around and help out, you know, if, if they want to be committed to doing that. Um, so I know Proctor has mentioned that too. Um, like oh, she'll, awesome. she'll be around a little bit next year. So that'd be great to have both of those two around to, you know, kind of tell the, the new players the ropes and mentor them a little bit. I mean, you, you can never have too much help. No, not at all. But we'll just thank you, Travis, for joining us today for our Golden Eagle Insider uh, Zoom podcast meeting here. And, uh, just wish you luck here the rest of this summer, getting ready, finishing out that recruiting class and getting ready for uh, that 2021 season. And uh, just thanks again for joining us. Yeah, you're welcome, guys. Thank you. Hopefully uh, next time we run into each other can be in the offices, but I'm always open to Zooming. So yeah, Zoom, Absolutely. Meetings are, yeah, Zoom meetings are a great way to get in touch. But yeah, it'll be exciting when we can actually see each other in person. And uh, just, yeah, it'll be great to be back in the support center and have a little bit more normalcy, but yep. it's been, yeah, no doubt. been great to do this uh, and keep in contact any way that we possibly can. But thanks again. Right. Uh, thanks again, everyone. And thanks for those that will be watching this video as well. Uh, go Golden Eagles. Wings up.